So today we're looking at a tool that by itself isn't really that useful, but once you actually bring it into a pipeline, it can actually have some pretty cool use cases. So this is an application called YAD, which is basically going to let you create GTK interfaces directly from your shell, and you can customize it as much as you normally would be able to if you did it from a language like, say, Python or C++. Now, because it's GTK, there's a lot of default components and default interfaces that already exist. So, for example, if we do yad dash dash file, that's going to open up a file picker, and this will be the default GTK file picker. So, let's go to, say, my desktop and select this file right here. Now, this isn't actually going to do anything on the file. All it's going to do is just output the file path. So, as we can see, that's outputted that one as we would expect it to. Another cool one we have is yad dash dash color. So this obviously is going to be a color picker. So let's go to say blue and then select this blue here. Now there is also an alpha slider here, but this won't actually be outputted with the default settings. You actually have to go and enable the alpha slider. So let's just leave that at max right now and then output this value right here. And that's going to output whatever color we selected. So we can also do yad dash dash calendar. And this obviously is going to be a calendar. Let's go to say 2022 and let's go to Christmas. And if we select this right here, it's then going to output that date. Now by default, the date is going to be in the only correct format, which is day, month, year, but that can be configured. And another cool one we have is yad dash dash notification, which basically adds something into your system tray. So in this case, we have a little icon up here. It's not really doing that much. As soon as you click on it though, it will go and close. Now, I could do an entire video just on these pre-made interfaces. So if we go to the dialogue options, as we're going to see, there is quite a few of them and all of them have their own individual options. So for this video, I'm going to do a very high level look at this application. I'll show you some examples of how you can use these, but I will be coming back to this at a later date because otherwise this is probably going to be a three or four hour video. So the first example we have is with our file picker. So I've got all these written down off screen just so I don't have to try to write them on screen and make a mistake somewhere. So what we're doing here is we're setting the window title. So right now the window title is going to be set to select a file to remove. If you don't set a window title, the default title is just going to be YAD. And we're also setting it obviously to the file picker. And then we are setting the geometry of the window. Now, because I'm in a tiling window manager, this geometry most of the time is just going to be ignored, but I'll show you what it looks like in a floating mode. So the way that this works is width by height, and then we have X and Y. So in this case, it's gonna be located in plus 100X and plus 100Y. So if we go and run this now, as we're gonna see, we have a file picker here. The window title is select a file to remove. And if we go and put this into floating mode, as we're gonna see, it's located where I said it would be. Let's go and mess with that a bit and see what we can do. So let's go and say, change the Y location to 500 and run that again. So if we go and put that into floating mode now, as you can see, it's down the bottom here. It's pretty straightforward how that works though. So for the next example, we're gonna be using a different type of window. This time it's going to be the text entry window, which is pretty straightforward what it does. Basically, it gives you a little box to enter some text. So in this case, what we're doing is we're setting the window title again, and we're setting it to dash dash entry. So not dash dash text dash entry, just entry. And then we're also setting the text of the window. So the text of the window, is this bit of text up the top here. So generally that text will be shown above everything else. So let's go and actually enter some text in here and then press okay. And as we're gonna see, I know you can't actually see the okay button, but uh, if you actually go and see this, basically every window just has a cancel and okay button here. I don't really think I need to explain how those actually work though. So if we go and actually set the text of a different window type, let's go and set the text of say the, uh, the file window. So as we're gonna see, this does work on that window type as well. So both title and text are generic options that work on every single window type. So for this next one, we're just gonna use the default interface. We're not actually gonna use any of the predefined interface types. So what we're gonna do is run this command right here. So yad dash dash image, and we're setting the image to dialogue dash question. Now, this image I'm using in here is one of the images defined inside of my GTK theme. I think you can find a list of these in the GTK documentation. So if I can find it, I'll leave a link to it down below. 
But if you're not going to do that, you can also use a path to an image. We're also setting the title once again, but we're also using another new option. This is the dash dash button option. So in this case, we're setting the button to yad dash yes, and we're giving it an index of zero. And the second one is yad dash no, and we're giving that an index of one. Now the index is just there so you can identify the button later down the line in the pipeline. But these buttons here are actually some of the predefined buttons inside of YAD. And these are actually mapped to buttons that are predefined inside of GTK. So you can go find a full list of these inside of the man page for YAD. So let's go down to YAD-YES. And here we go. So we have things like YAD-ABOUT or YAD-ADD, YAD-APPLY, YAD-CANCEL. And as you can see, these are the icons that those buttons are going to be using but you can also define your own buttons as well. But for most situations though, the defaults are probably going to be just fine. So let's go and run this interface now. And basically it's gonna give us a little message box here saying that Microsoft Windows would be found. Would you like to remove it? And if we press yes, presumably if we had this in a pipeline, it would then go and delete those files. So the next example we have is of a checklist. So this is gonna be done with the dash dash list option and setting it into checklist mode and setting into checklist mode with the dash dash checklist option. Now there are other sort of list options as well, and I will show you those in just a bit. So because this is a list, we need to have some columns. So the first column we have is the by column, and the second column we have is the item column. Now the way that we define what is checkable is basically anything that has a Boolean value in it is going to be checkable. So in this case, our by column is going to be entirely checkboxes. So if we go and run this now, as we can see, it's laid out as we would expect it to be. Now, one of the nice things about this interface is you can actually go and change the sorting of stuff. So if we go and click up here, by default, it's in ascending order, but we can also go and switch it into descending order as well by clicking that again. Now let's go and run this as a regular list and see what actually happens. So if we go and get rid of the checklist option that we have right here, so this one right here, and run it again. As we can see, all the values in the by column now are just printing out whatever text we had there. It's not actually interpreting it as a Boolean value. So let's instead go and run it as a radio list. So a radio list is basically a list where you can only select one of the options. Now, I don't know how it's gonna behave when we actually have multiple things set to true out of the box. I think it's just gonna pick maybe the latest one, but let's actually see. Now it's actually selected both of them. So if you want your radio list to behave properly when it first launches up, don't go and set multiple things to true at once. Now I've got one last example to show you and then we're gonna move on to something else. So this time what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use a list, but we're gonna populate it with data from another application. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run FD and get every single PNG file on my system and basically load it into a list inside of YAD. Now, FD is basically like find but quicker. So if you've never used the application before, that's basically what it does. Now, the only new thing that we're looking at here is we've got the dash dash close on unfocus, which should be fairly self-explanatory. If I take my mouse off of the window, basically it's gonna close the window. So if we go and run this now, as we're gonna see, we have a big list of all the PNG files that I've got on my system. Let's just go and select say this one right here. And as we can see, it then prints out that file. But let's try that again and then take my mouse off of the window. So as we can see, my mouse is over here and then take my mouse off the window, it automatically closes. Obviously in a situation like this, you probably wouldn't wanna use that option, but I didn't really have a better example to show it to you. So I lied, I've actually got one more example to show you and this one is actually pretty cool. So. This one is gonna be working with the dash dash notification option, but what we're gonna do is actually run a command after we click on the notification. Now the dash dash command option is an option that only works inside of the notification. So basically what's gonna happen is when we click on the notification, it's gonna open up my terminal and then try to run Pac-Man. So let's go and run this. If we hover over this, as we're gonna see, it says system update, and then we click on this, Basically, it's gonna to try to do an update, but for now, we're not gonna do that just in case it breaks my webcam. So all the stuff I've shown you has been pretty useful, but I've just been working with the default interfaces making some minor tweaks. You can also go and completely build your own interfaces, and this page right here has some really advanced examples of working with YAD. So this first one we have is pretty long, what is it? 
150 lines, and basically what it is, is a GUI URX VT configurator. So this is going to go and actually modify your X resources file and let you basically configure your XVT with a GUI. So this is the sort of stuff you can do if you want to put in the effort and actually work with YAD for a long time. Or you can do things like, say, building a front end for fine. Now this one is a little bit simpler. This one is only 50 lines. But even so, this is really impressive what can be done with this. Another example that we have is basically gathering all of your system information. So basically, this works like something like, say, CPU-Z or some of the tools that exist that do the same thing on the Linux side. So I will be returning to this in the future when I start using this in various projects. But for today, I just wanted to give you a basic example of what can be done with this application and then show you some extreme examples of what you can do if you want to sit down with this for a couple of hours. Now, if you want to use the GTK2 version, that does exist as well. I've been working with the GTK3 version just because that's sort of what you do now. There's no reason to really use GTK2. It's worse in every way. So if you want to use that though, there is a maintenance branch that does support GTK2. I wouldn't recommend using it though, but hey, it's here if you want to use it. So I only really have two problems with this. The first one is if you put in an option that doesn't exist, the application just runs perfectly fine ignoring that option. I would like to see a, at least a mode where if you put in an option that doesn't exist, it will crash. I might have missed it, it could be there, but by default it doesn't crash with an option that doesn't exist. The other thing is in the example section of the man page, it's a little bit outdated. Some of the options don't line up with what the application is using now. It's only a slight issue, but it does make it a bit harder to start using this application for the first time. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but if you've got any really cool creations that you've made with this application, go check out my Discord and check out like the programming channel or I guess maybe the Linux channel, one of those. Go post it in there and let me know what you've actually made because I'd be really interested to see what you guys are actually capable of. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris Corbinian, Joachim, Andrew, Craig, Nathan, Monster, Chico Bento, Joseph, Peter D. Road, Tony Brennan, Donald, John, Marek, Mikkel, Nate Dog, Nephite, Poe, Tees, and Zilver. If you want to go on support, I've worked on the links down below to my subscribe star, Libra Pay, Patreon, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea. It's not really a tech podcast, but it's available basically any way you can listen to podcasts. I've also got my channel, this one right here, available on Library, Odyssey, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.